Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good evening. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, so welcome to our broadcast. Uh, we are today, as uh, our tradition is, uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, YouTube. So it would be great if you can ping us on comments that you can hear us and see us. I will check uh, on the phone that, you know, LinkedIn is working properly. Yes. And, and then we can please, start. I hope nobody looks too closely because my daughter told me today, Mommy, your blue eye makeup looks so lovely. I said, I'm not wearing blue eye makeup. She said, yeah, I see it all under here. I said, oh, darling, that's bags under my eyes from not sleeping. <laughs> I, so nobody yeah, look too closely. <laughs> this one works properly, uh, LinkedIn. Good. So, We've got yeah. you oh, too. Good, good, good evening. Yeah. Nika. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, so YouTube is working, definitely. Uh, Wonderful. If, if somebody from uh, Facebook and LinkedIn can ping us that it's working, that would be great. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll have to say a big thank you to Micha, who uh, attends almost every time we have these sessions. He's such a good supporter, fan, friend. And now he's the one who's going to help us actually launch this podcast. So behind the scenes, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's right. working. Absolutely. He's working hard to help us. So we have to give yeah. a big thank you. Not a Lucius, Victor, Juraj, Dominka. So it's, it looks like it's working. <laughs> you look... You look always thank very you. nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the honesty of children that you know you can trust. <laughs> that, that's right. So should we should we start because we have an interesting team and uh, uh, when we discuss uh, uh, a lot with Lisa, kind of what does it take to move from individual contributor to the leader, right? And I can tell you that probably there's a 50% probability that you will fail, basically. Yes. Unless you will really understand dynamic and so on. I, I can tell you what is in kind of the in IT industry, but I believe it goes beyond IT industry. Uh, if you are successful, say, salesman in, in selling, okay, People are usually your, you know, superiors are catching you up and saying, well, you will be great sales manager. OK, but then you are not equipped immediately to be great sales manager. And, you know, it's really like 50 50 because it's a very different job and not everybody would like to be leader. OK, can, can give you. So that's kind of the business experience. I can give you my experience from sport. I have a friend, he's a, uh, you know, Yaroslav Shilhavi, he's a national coach for the Czech, you know, A team in the, in the soccer, in football, okay? And he's telling me that out of the 22 players, there is one or maybe two who can be captains, right? This is it. So it's pretty much like 10% of the overall population, right? Not that, not, not that many, if you, if you will. So... It is a it is a different job, and we will talk about what it takes to yeah. you know go to that you know journey to move really from the doer from be individual contributor to be leader. That's, so that's kind of the kickoff you know from me, and I'll hand over to Lisa. I love it. It was a fantastic kickoff. So yeah, I actually have written down the exact same note because as an individual contributor, you find success and that's why you've been invited or found your way into potentially into a leadership role, you're in a leadership role. But this is where most people fail because they get stuck thinking, I'm just going to do more of the same. I was really good at doing the work as an individual contributor. I just do it at a higher level now. But that yeah. shift really into leadership doesn't happen. So if you've heard of the Peter principle where you get promoted to the point where you're no longer competent, this is actually what exactly. I find is what keeps people in that not competent <laughs> stage. And one thing that Jan brought up that's just so important is you have to know the job that you're taking on, which is you're leading people. Do you like leading people? This is the hardest part of the job. Strategy is easy, Absolutely. relatively speaking, right? It's people that's the hardest part of the job. And what most people don't realize or don't understand is all of the stuff that you were good at for your whole life, you, you know, when you were getting good grades at school, um, when you were, you know, doing well in your sports, 
people gave you praise and you said, okay, let me do that more. Let me continue to do that more. Let me continue to do that more. And then you get praise for your work early career. Let me continue to do that more. Let me continue to do that more. And nobody ever says, stop, unlearn. And there's a completely new set of skills for what you need to do. For me, step one, if you ever want to be able to make that shift is you need to consciously think about how is this role different? How is this shift different? And I actually have a list of like 10 things, I'll read them out to you now, about what it is that makes you a real leader. But first, I would love to see in the comments for anyone who's here live listening, what do you think it takes to be a leader that, you know, you, there's a skill set you didn't necessarily need as an individual contributor. Because what people will say as an individual contributor, you need to be an expert, right? You need to be really good at organizing, project managing, whatever it is that you need. What's the skill set you need for leadership? And as you're typing those in, I'm going to start with the first one that most people know, providing the vision and the inspiration to get people moving towards a goal. Most people know this. Very few leaders know how to do this. And so they just don't. <laughs> That is not a good uh, way to move forward. If you're not sure what the vision is or you're waiting to have the perfect communications plan for it, wrong. This is not a one time I told you at the beginning of the year where we're going. This is a constant, continual conversation, constantly, every day, getting people lit up, knowing where they're headed, why they're headed, why it's important. The other one, and I won't go through my whole list of 10, otherwise Jan will fall asleep while I'm talking, but I will start off with the second one as well. People don't know that their job as leaders is to create clarity. I'm not joking. I was with a leadership team today of a major Fortune 100 company going through restructuring, reorganization, fine. They're going... Well, we don't know what the future is going to look like. We're waiting to hear more from, you know, the CEO and the board. We're uh, waiting around. And it's like, hold on. Aren't you the leadership team? Hold on. <laughs> Couldn't you be coming up with some ways forward and having some ideas and creating some clarity instead of passively waiting for something to be handed to you? Aren't you as a leader the ones who are going out to create it? And in this ambiguous, uncertain sort of environment that we work in, if you as a leader, if you're not constantly creating clarity, then you're not doing your job as a leader. This is the, mo I think, the most important skill set to have, which most leaders don't have. Constantly creating clarity. CCC. I'll pause there for a second. Jan, I'd love to know if you have any other thoughts you want to add in here about, you know, what skills does a leader need? I took a little bit different approach uh, hmm. tonight. I will first talk about what I think is a leadership and management and what does it take. And then what I will do, I generated through artificial intelligence the list. And I will oh. talk on what artificial intelligence, in this case, you know, chat GDP, uh, which is like, I don't know if you if you know it, but it's, a, it's oh, yeah. pretty good. It's it's kind of the beta still, but it's pretty good. So I will comment on what uh, artificial intelligence thinks about leadership, okay? Okay. I need to pause you for a second. I used ChatGPT to write my last Forbes article. It you was see? pretty good. Absolutely. <laughs> it saved me a lot of time. I mean, I went back and edited it, but it saved a lot of time. So I'm curious to know Funny what ChatGPT said. Funny said. enough, yesterday the, you, you used to be also part of the school with the uh, with the fellows at the Harvard Coaching Institute. Yes. We had a call and they were launching the book, My Prism, which is basically the book, how to move kind of the leadership mindset from autopilot to mindfulness and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, hey, you know, did you use artificial intelligence? Because the future, in my view, is not about answers. It's about asking the right questions and formulate the right issues because everything yes. else, like gathering the data, you know, the answers are there, definitely. That's what I think artificial intelligence will do for sure. And what I did, and I would say like 30% of those people are using, uh, you know, uh, chat GDP. Uh, but I said, let's do following. I, I put your book there and I will ask artificial intelligence to write poem. 
And, and three seconds. There was a nice poem about the book, which was not launched yet, you know, right? Anyway, <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk about the leadership, okay? So, uh, you know, I think if, if you will, you know, lead and manage people, those are two different things. You, you, you still, you know, do it, the same person. But managing means like managing the people, managing the task, what they do. Leadership is indeed... Because the big thing is providing clarity. Because your brains, they you can be very tough with the people, but you need to be predictable. And more predictable will you be with your vision and the strategy, better for the team and people will like, what do you do? Because leaders are basically uh, what is necessary for them to find what is best in the people. Put people together so there's a lot of synergy. My, you know, talents are covering Lisa weaknesses and the other way around. So there's a, we are, you know, great team. And there is a great vision for inspiration of those people providing great, you know, clarity. I know it's a vision. Maybe it's not happening in that way, but it's still, you know, good to have this vision. And once people st start to believe in what you believe, they will, you know, follow you. This is it. That's, that's the leadership. So leadership is really about providing, you know, clarity, uh, getting what is best in the in the people and providing the vision so people will, you know, follow you. And then you have not only individual people being in the flow, having, you know, optimal performance, but there is a team flow, you know, because they will really like what they do. And you, if you provide, because clarity usually provides purpose in your life and it can be your individual life and it can be life of the overall organization this is this is it this is how it works uh, right and you know more for for i think for the leaders what is what is clear more you understand who you are better you understand other people it's even in the romantic relationship i got recently you know uh some broadcasts on the uh and i i mentioned book uh, uh the honeymoon effect from bruce lipton you know right mm -hmm. how you can prolong your honeymoon in your life provided that you, you understand yourself but you also understand your romantic partner and if you know the my goal my goal is not that my romantic partner will make a lot of money yeah if, I, it's, if it's the case fine but my goal is to make my romantic partner happy, you know, because happiest people are those who can make other people happy through something they love. You know what I mean, right? So, yes. so this is it in the in in the nutshell. So it's easy to say, but hard to do because that move from individual contributor to the leader is very tough. And now the issues you may have, right? The kind of the mistakes I did, okay. If you are individual contributor, you and you are good, you think you are best in the world. You are basically <laughs> ambassador of the God on the earth, right? That's what you think about yourself. If you are like 30 years old, I'm the best in the world. There's nobody, you know, maybe Gates a little bit better, but no, there's nobody else, you know, right? I'm the best guy. Okay? So what do you do when you move to the leadership job? You try to basically, you know, leverage what you did when you were individual contributor, which is not necessarily bad. But it's something different. And what do you do, basically? You are like, okay, I will do tough task. I will do on my own because I'm the best in the group. That's why I'm the leader. Okay. And everything else, the easiest stuff will be done by my people. Boom. So you, I, then, you are, then you are called micromanager because you are micromanaging those people. So you are killing yourself because at some point you will be, you know, exhausted. Yes. And you are not developing those people, your organization. So micromanagement is very bad. And everybody, you cannot avoid it. You know, everybody will do that. Depends whether you did you do it for 10 years or just 10 months. That's a that's a huge difference. Okay. That's mistake number one. Mistake number two, if you are smart, and I think I am smart. I was smart, but, you know, and I, I've got a lot of smart people around me. But you think that other people, they think in the same way as you think, especially mm -hmm. if you are ENTJ in Myers-Briggs, you know, you think you are pretty smart and other, other people, you know, are, you know, the same deep thinkers as you. And while in Tour de France, if you are, you know, out of the peloton, out of the group, it's great because you are winning. 
if you are ahead of your people, you are in the deep shit because nobody is following you. And, you know, leader is not defined by the business car. Leader is defined by the people following him, right, yeah. or her. So th this is it. So those are a couple of, you know, mistakes uh, I did personally. <laughs> uh, fortunately, it was rather, you know, short. I would still say one third mistake. I think I, I was able to make a lot of good decisions. I screwed up some other stuff. Fine, you know, right? But my pe people came to me and said, Jan, we respect you a lot, but you are not a good listener. You don't mm. listen to our advice whatsoever. Okay. And then because I'm really not, I'm not like I'm empathic, but I need to know the person a little bit more. Then I'm really deeply empathic. It's, it's called in uh, uh it's called you know relationship in relator in uh, uh gallup strengths find relator strength okay and i said well you know but i'm not empathic how i will build this you know muscles this capacity and you know how i did it because i'm extremely uh curious and you know i like to learn so i i basically switch my brain i said if i will you know shut up sometimes and listen more, I will learn more. And this is it, basically. That's, yes. and you know, at the end of the day, when you listen to the people, I told them, I will listen to you, but I will still, at the, I will gather some information from you, but I will still make that decision based on what I think, because I am the leader, but they were absolutely fine with it, but they, they wanted to be heard, you know, right? So, Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so many good things there. And I just want to add, we have this really great comment from Marek, if you want to bring it up there. I always find it a bit funny when people who try to be leaders think only about themselves. Okay. It's about unlocking potential in others around yeah. you. And that's exactly it. This is the shift. Individual contributor is, I'm building my career, I'm making my reputation, I'm finding my way. And true leaders, you don't have to lose that. I'm not saying all of a sudden you don't care about yourself at all or your career or your ambition. But what I'm saying is you put first and foremost something bigger, something outside of you. Yeah. So what's your vision? What's, what do you want to bring into the world? How do you want to get the masses of people to follow you so you can create something bigger? It's going from this and then instead of trying to go here, really, you know, no one person is going to change the world alone. I, so I absolutely agree. But you know, you you need to be aware of your ego. Okay, I tell you what. Yes. I I was one of the youngest vice presidents in the company, and I was really like looking forward to have it on the business card. No kidding. Okay. I was having an office. I mean, we were living at the time in Munich. I was like watching my you know business card all the time. Okay. I was like, oh, the vice president for a mayor. Okay. And I was like expecting that something new will happen. Nothing happened. After that one week, I turned it, you know, I, I put it in the uh, rubbish bin. And I said, well, I'm not here because of the title or whatever. I'm here, as you said, because of the other, or as Marek is saying, because of the other people. But you need to be, I mean, everybody has got some, you know, ego, right? We, we wanted to be like admired, whatever. And now I'm not giving a shit. I've got enough fame. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I spoke in front of the, uh, you know, like 100 students today in Bano, and I would say like 50% of my speech was like my failures, you know, <laughs> both in terms of coaching, you know, athletes. And, <laughs> but and that's fine. You learn as you go. But this is it. it. It is it is not about you. It's about other people. You learn from the other people and you also learn from leading people. And you will for sure make some mistakes, you know, for sure. Okay. Because it, the, my mistake, I was thinking everybody uh, perceived the world in the same way like Jan. And it's not, I mean, come on, it's not true. If you are like analytical brain, you go for, on more details. If you are like strategic brain, you go from helicopter to the, to the air, like what I do, you know, right? And both approaches are absolutely fine. You just need to be aware where we are the same, where we are similar, where we are different. That's right. A true one of the great things on my list when we're talking about I like the distinction you made between managing and leadership. When you're managing team members, you have to know their preferences. It's the golden rule 
treat others the way you want to be treated. No, it's the platinum rule instead. Treat others the way they want to be treated. So you have to know what are my preferences and how do I not push that on other people? What are their preferences and how do I flex to meet their needs? Yeah. What is your opinion, doer, leader, and engagement within the organization? I tell you what. I love to talk, I mean, it was the same in Microsoft. I love to talk to the people. And for me, it didn't matter whether they were like my direct reports or three levels below me. I talk to everybody, okay? On the other hand, you know, I always like to talk external people from the organization like customers, partners, media, and so on to have a reflection. Because sometimes, you know, people... It would say, Jan, you're doing so great. You know, you are so great. If if people are saying like that, some, it's like something, <laughs> like something, <laughs> something is not good. Okay, so you that, you that's rather, it. fine. I I like if people appreciate what I do, but I like feedback in kind of a structured way. What should I continue? What should I stop? What should I start? This is it. This is what's, what is moving me ahead, you know, right? The, the, this is it. And that's the same with the with your people, with the, uh, your organization. And I think it's important in with, with, if you talk about engagement within an organization, that all voices are heard. All people should be, all people should be able to speak, you know, right? We, we've got every year, it was called first Organization Health Index and then WHI, like World, World Health Index, okay? It was like 120 questions, deep questions, how you are satisfied with your job, with your boss, with your organizational leadership and so on. So it was really, you know, good reflection, I would say, right? That was kind of the internal stuff. And then we've got another one, it was quarterly, called CPE, Customer and Partner Experience, when we ask, you know, different segments of our customers or our partners, like developers, wrestlers, and stuff like that, on specific questions, whether they are happy with the products, whether they are happy with the salespeople, and so on. Because, you know what, I think once you, you cut the feedback, you know, you are not able to get, you know, feedback, it's bad. Uh, if you think about, you know... Uh, Rome Empire, uh, it was, I mean, all big empires are failing down because they are not aware of what's going on, basically. There is a disruption economy, there is a disruption in sport, there is disruption everywhere. I, I, I tell you what, I think artificial intelligence, I don't know yet, like, exactly the answers, but I think it will disrupt all jobs and everything. And it's better to think like, how can I use it in my favor as extension of me, Liz, Ryan, other Marek, and other people on the on the call, as opposed, oh, this is the enemy. I should, you know, fight it. Come on, you know, it it's definitely there. I'm not saying that there are some dangers like autonomous, you know, weapons and stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. I hope that you know humankind will, you know, manage that. But we should look at it as a as an opportunity, definitely. And I think that's the point, right? We have to accept what is and then work with it. And I want to give a quick answer to this engagement within the organizations as well from the employee perspective. You have to think of every employee just like you would think of every customer if you're selling or marketing. You have to always know that they need an answer to what's in it for me. Why should I bother doing extra? Why should I bother working here, right? We have a bit of an entitled workforce that's going on in the world where people go, I have choices, I have options, I could work remotely, I might choose to not work at all. So they're not feeling like, oh, I'll just take any job any employer will give me, no. And so engagement will come from a few things. Number one, first and foremost, as humans, we want our autonomy. We want our freedom. This is why Jan said, hey, as a manager, you're going to think, I'm really good at this. I'll just micromanage everything because I've got it under control and I can yeah. do it great. People don't like that. Do any of you like being micromanaged? No, because they want their autonomy. What they don't want is to be left alone and they don't know what's going on. So this is where the balance of a good leader comes. Not that they feel I have no idea what to do and I'm alone in this. And not that it just comes from top down, do this, do this, do this. They need their autonomy, but they need to also be able to feel capable in that moment. 
Second of all, in order for people to feel engaged, they need to feel a sense of belonging, which yep. ties to feeling that there's purpose to the work that they're doing. You as the leader, you're setting the vision. You're making sure this is interesting. We're going to save the environment. We're going to, you know, be the next AI company. We're going to create the future we want. And but always remember the people who work there, that has to be meaningful to them and they have to connect themselves to the greater purpose. Right. That's how you're going to get them naturally engaged. And that's why as a leader, when we're constantly talking about the vision, the impact we're creating in the world, celebrating some of the wins and successes that we have, again, the more motivated people become and therefore the more engaged they feel. When they're excited about the topic, when they feel they can speak up and be heard, when their ideas matter, right? When what they say actually gets implemented so they feel they, have, they are putting into what's creating that impact that's when you're going to see engagement. And we need to think of ourselves, one of these leadership, you know, I told you, I have a whole list of new skills you have. You basically need to think of yourself as a salesperson or an influencer every day, every meeting. It's not, I'm the boss and you do this and you take care of this. You always need to be thinking what's in it for them. What do they need to get motivated about this? Right. How do I phrase it or word it or explain it or put a context around it to help them feel connected, bought in, excited that they co-create with me and they come with the energy. It should never be from top down push or rarely. I can't say never. No, absolutely. It's called buy in, you know, right. If you yeah. have a strong buy in from the other people, they follow you. They really believe in what you believe. This is it. What, what Lisa talk about, it's almost like, you know, Maslow pyramid in the opposite direction. So think about it. I mean, traditional Maslow pyramid is like, I need to cover the basics, like the food, you know, shelter, whatever. Then I need to belong to somewhere. Then I can be recognized. And on the top is basically self-actualization. How about if you do it differently? How about if you would know very early in your life, what is your meaning in your life? What is your talent? How you can use it? What are your passions? And so on. So we'll, you will start from the peak. So you will do something you really, you know, like, right? Then the chances are you are in the good team. There are other people who like what they, you know, do. They, you know, you belong to the team. You are recognized. And then obviously the bottom of the pyramid will be taken care of because you, you, you will obviously okay. make, you know, money and so on. Couple of points from the uh, artificial intelligence. Tell us, we want to know. The, the, <laughs> the first point uh, artificial intelligence put there is like, you know, develop new mindset. And I can't agree, you know, more because if you are individual contributor, your goal is really to do some tasks, okay? If you are, you know, leader, manager, if you are responsible for, for the people, your goal is to, like inspire people, develop people. There are like four things you do. You need to attract talent and keep talent in your organization. That's number. That's job number one. Okay. Job number two is how you will, you know, inspire people. Basically, how you will make sh uh, sure that your performance of the overall organization is consistent. Okay. Each and every individual and the whole organization. So it's consistency of the performance, how you know you will inspire them. The third thing is how you will measure them, because it's important to have a fair, you know, measurement, balance, scorecards, whatever we call it. And last but not least is personal development, how you develop those people, because it's changing, you know, what so those are those are you know the skills, and that's the way your mindset needs, you know, to change. Guys, what I realized, you know, coaching some startups that in average, there is only one startup out of the 10 who will make it. So there's a chance of 10%. If you will invest some money in the startup, uh, there is quite little chance. You know, there is a you know good chance if, if there's an IPO 10 years from you know now, that's a big chance, yeah. right? As I said, it's like 10%. And why? A lot of people think it's technology, whatever. No, those technology-wise, they are quite good. The issue is when you have like leader, usually that leader, he or she is, you know, uh, 
technically very well, but not necessarily very well equipped how to lead people. Okay. And that leader, that is a there is a startup company, and that leader at some point would have like 15 direct reports. There would be like 16 people in the company. Leader, and then that leader would say, What I need to do, I need to build another layer of the of the management. And that's the big, big problem. Because if you are like managing uh, individual contributors, it's very different job from managing the managers, managing the leaders. You need to develop, you know, leadership skills and so on. And that's what majority of the founders, they don't know how to do it. That's why they are, you know, basically failing. That's the big issue. So the big issue is not technology, but it's self-awareness and understand the other people inspire them develop them that's the that's in my view at least with the startups that's a that's a big issue yes there are many things i i coach a lot of startups who have gone into scale-ups and sometimes yeah. i have to do conflict management sometimes yeah. i have to help a founding ceo to exit because it's a different skill set to do a startup to go to a scale-up as you're saying and one of the one of the challenges is being able to think small and big. And of course, the day-to-day -day crush of the expectations, are you going to meet your numbers, customers calling, your boss is asking where things are. For people who go, ah, I just have to get this done. I have to make sure everything on my to-do list is ready. And if you're more focused in that fear state of execution, First of all, nobody's ever going to catch up ever. I mean, I've never seen inbox zero. And I think in my 20 years, Absolutely. right? So if you let that be your prioritization list and your to-do list, you're already setting the wrong stage. Immediately when you feel we're overwhelmed, there's too much, there's so much going on, too many expectations. I don't know where to go. Pause and zoom out. Because not only do you need to do this for yourself, to not feel overwhelmed, to not get caught into the trees, but see the whole force. But you need to be able to help your team do that. Your individual contributors only know how to do this, right? Even first level managers, et cetera, they're very in the tactical. Yeah, it's narrow. Yeah. And they need someone who can help them to become, to zoom out. That's one of the great things about having that sort of North Star, a purpose, a clear strategy where we're going. Because when you've zoomed out, you can take a look. I'm sure, I'm positive, every activity you're doing is adding value, but what adds the most value? Where do we prioritize the team? What can we say no to? What do we cut out? What do we automate, right? What? How do we rethink processes and constantly be creating more efficiency or effectiveness. Don't get stuck in the day to day. It will keep you in fear mode. It will keep you in overwhelm mode. And you as a leader have to be the one who zooms out and gets everybody to that. I see it. I get it. I know where I'm going again. Realignment. And as part of that, you it's also your role as a leader to shield the team from the stress and the pressure that's coming from above. You have to be like their umbrella. You have to take some of that burden. But what that means, if you're taking the extra burden and you're not passing it down because you're gonna help them because that helps them to stay focused, right? It means you need to be damn sure you have an outlet. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up carrying a bag full of rocks in your backpack alone. Many of my senior executive clients want to coach because they just have nobody to share that backpack with. <laughs> and so they say, I just need a coach with someone to talk to. I'm lonely here. I don't know where it can go. I can't talk to my boss. I can't talk to my team, et cetera. You have to have practices where you are taking out the rocks. If it's sharing with someone, fine. If it's a coach, yeah, and I will always support that, right? But it could be exercise. It could be prioritizing sleep. It could be meditation whatever it is, but you've got to make sure that as you take these burdens on, you don't let them crush you. You have to shield the team and find your way to release them. All right. I'm talking a lot. And we've got a lot of uh, new comments coming in. Yeah. Edward Bass, I say never invest in startup. It's just no empathic founders or founders with a lot of potential. That's why I never liked Tesla stock. You know, I, uh, I must say that 
I admire Elon Musk as a visionary. I don't think he is a great leader or manager. That's my point. Uh, right, and it, and it, this is it. But the same applied for Steve Jobs. I really admire strongly Steve Jobs. He was not the best manager. If you watch the movie, uh, you know that that was it basically. So uh, I tend to I tend to agree with what Edward, Edward said because empathy has to do with the meaning, you know. And at some point, because that's another point, what you know, artificial intelligence is saying. You need to build relationships, and best relationships are built on understanding each other. So I think empathy is a is a, is a great thing if you understand each other. Because if you understand each other, you know, and you know each other more, then you can trust each other, and that's about you know relationships. So what what I did, for example, to really strengthen the relationship, because. I was like relatively, you know, new in the team. I said, okay, let's do now, now for one year. I said, there's like, you know, 40 different nationalities. So let's do every Friday because there were some Fridays where everybody was gone. So like 40 Fridays during that year, everybody from specific country, we call it pizza lunch, and everybody was presenting a couple of PowerPoint slides or no slides, whatever, talking about the country. Okay, what are kind of the, you know, routines, habits, and so on, right? And I, I think it improved understanding each other. That, that was number one. Number two, I did every year, it was called Family Olympic Games. So we would bring all families for, like it started Friday afternoon, it we finished like uh, Sunday evening. Sometimes it was around in Munich surroundings or in Alps. And we were like competing families together. It was so much fun. And you, you know, because if you are like out of your office, out of the job, you really understand much better each other because we are all human beings. And then if there are tough situations, you stick together. Okay. So those are easy things you guys can do. The other thing I did, I mean, in some subsidiaries, it was easier. Like in Budapest, we have a subsidiary alongside the the river uh, uh alongside the river uh, in 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 budapest uh, uh dunai uh, and i was having like 101s we were like walking and having 101s i've got like my voice recorder i was i was asking a lot of questions because it was top of my head and we were talking it was a nice walk you know kind of the relax but we, we talk uh, really about the serious business because the, the the one thing it's the same in sport in sport Best athletes are those who can be very aggressive, but can be very relaxed, you know, on the other. You know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Aggressive and relaxed. So it, it is the same in business. You, you talk about serious stuff, so you need to concentrate, be in it, but be like relaxed. If I would not be like, when I was facing the whole day, Bill Gates, he was sometimes not happy what he heard from me, whatever. <laughs> so he was shouting and I was relaxed, you know, right? Otherwise, you can't, you cannot survive, you know, right? So uh, that's, uh, uh, th th this is it. So I think empathy, as uh, you know, Edward rightly said, super important in this, you know, building relationship because then once the relationship is built, you, Lisa rightly said, it is about vision, but then influencing people. So they really, you know, in fact, sell it. And whatever you sell, whether you sell it to the customer, some product services, but you sell some thoughts to your own people, to some, some vision, you are selling, first of all, yourself. Okay. So if people believe in you as a person, you know, they will believe the vision. If they if they think you are shit, you know, they, you, we don't, you know, believe you, forget it. They may pretend they believe in your vision, but they will never, you know, right? So this is it. You know, I ask, you know, when I was leaving Microsoft, so I asked a couple of questions. How Jan will be remembered in the organization? And I would summarize it. I would summarize it. Two pillars. Crazy guy, but it's our guy. It's our guy. It's part of the team. And this is it, you know, right? By crazy, you know, rational people in our lives are usually right, but only crazy people are changing the world. Think about it. Yes. Right? And 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 that sense of belonging, be part of the team. I really, you know, appreciate it. And I, I still, I'm, I'm still getting some emails like we still remember you, like eight years. So it's, 
you know, it goes, nice. it's, it's really good. But I, I really do believe that this piece on relationship, on empathy is very much underestimated, you know, in yes. your mission. I want to add something here because I think it's really important to add. Uh, but sorry, before we switch, I want to go back to Edward's question, which is okay. about yeah, just, which is second. about the empathy yeah. in founders, because this is really important because we're watching history happen live. Um, what it was in Silicon Valley is they wanted people who were going to do the hockey stick, right? How could you scale mean and fast? And we saw a lot of founders do that. But then in the last few years, we watched those founders crash. We watched Uber and the CEO fall. We watched WeWork and the CEO fall. We've all watched Theranos and the CEO falls. And in fact, there was recently an article about many of the Forbes 30 under 30 people who have been disgraced, this cryptocurrency, right? Um, so what happens is it's not to say that non-empathetic founders can't be successful they are often very successful until they crash it is not a sustainable success when we have people who cannot have relationships and cannot figure out steve jobs was a jerk remember that he got fired from his company and then he went back and learned the skill how do i be a little bit of a different person it's not that he's completely now a wonderful hugging dalai lama type right but he really recognized and understood so it's not that founders can't find success in the short term they can find hockey stick success but it will crash it is absolutely if you want long-term sustainable growth that will really truly stay a business the thing that VCs, uh, venture capitalists look for is what's the chemistry of the team? Because the product idea can fail. That's fine. You can always find another idea. There are a million out there. But can the team work together to get things done? So it is at the end about relationships for long-term success. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to finish on empathy, and then we will go to Marek, what he wrote. Uh, Ivana uh, wrote just... Just in regard, empathy is the only one of 12, 12 competencies. That's true for uh, em emotional intelligence domains. Uh, indeed, you know, if, if you, for the others, if you wanted to read a little bit, you know, more about emotional intelligence, it's, it's probably Daniel Goleman, Emotional Intelligence. The, the book is updated. It is about self-awareness, managing yourself, social, because that's this is it. If you understand who you are, you can understand your social environment and then building the, the relationship i think it, it is a it is a good comment that empathy is super important but it's not the only one net net yeah this, yeah. Is, this is a good one to read guys net, very net, very net. Ivana is absolutely right but the problem is that he already wow. said in 1995 when the book was first published he said that uh Traditional intelligence, IQ, is around 20% of the success. And the EQ, which is not taught in the school still today, it's 80% of the success. And we are still not teaching it, you know, right? We are teaching people what is around them. We are not teaching people what is inside them. And while, you know, in the school, I, I put some quote there on uh, Instagram. In the school, you will learn a lot of good things about other important people you will not learn anything about you you know mm. and that's the and i think that this is the this is the real issue you know right and this is one of the reasons why we don't have enough leaders today or real leaders if you will in politics because if you are in the politics today you are under so much pressure uh, and you need to brave to do a lot of reforms but you need to have a courage to be not elected, okay? And to be honest, I friend of mine who was, and I I, I believe, uh, you know, Mika knows him, Asko Aho was a prime minister from 1991 till 97 in Finland. And he did a lot of unpopular reform. He was not elected. And when he was writing for Barroso, was the president of the European Commission, he was writing like how reform should do. And he said like, we should elect people in the countries who are not afraid, you know, to be not elected, you know, right? And this is it, you know, right? Yeah. This is it. So Marek uh, made a good comment about uniforms, basically. I'll not read it the whole, but he's saying that in the U.S., kids are wearing uniforms and 
Uh, that's why, you know, they will be, he thinks that they'll be treated in the same way. And uh, the link to the leadership and the mindset, how we will treat everybody in the, in the same way. So I must say that, you know, uh, in some international schools in Prague, they were also uniforms, not in the Czech schools. Okay. Uh, I think I understand why is that, you know, right, to make sure that there are, you know, like kids from, from less, you know, fortunate families uh, will not wear like Armani or whatever, you know, right? So, right. On the other hand, what I know from the corporations like IBM, that they, at some point, IBM was all like blue suits, you know, uh, blue tie, uh, you know, white uh, shirt, okay? And they did some study on their own and they figured out that it's not developing curiosity if everybody is the same. You know what I mean, right? The same environment. So I don't have a clear opinion on uniforms, to be honest. You know, I'm honest with you, right? I understand why is it, but I'm a little bit afraid that it can be like, okay, everybody is the same and it can be like uniform, you know, thinking. Maybe I'm absolutely wrong. I don't know, but, but I'll be interested well, in your opinion. I was going to say, so I'm from the U.S., so I can speak on this, uh, you know, from a perspective. So in the public schools, we don't wear uniforms. It's also only that's in true. the private yeah. schools. Yeah. And um, even today, I have a niece that's in private school and she and she wears the uniform. It doesn't really equalize anything because what accessories are you wearing? The little girls still wear fancy jewelry, right? They still at nine, 10 years old. Who has the iPad? Who has the designer backpack? They see each other on weekends. They know who's wearing what. So in reality, it hasn't equalized status in that way. And I'm with you, Jan. I think it takes away a little bit of creativity and self-expression. Because when, I don't know about you. When I was a teenager, I felt like clothing was a really important way that I could express yeah. myself. It is, it is like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm personally not a fan. Um, but it does make your morning easier because every day you don't have to wonder what you're going to wear. Yeah. <laughs> my my daughter, she was in international school in Munich and international school here, but it was not, you know, it was not in uniform. But but I I mean I can understand the reason why they what they do what they what they do. It's the same by the way in the UK. In the UK, even public schools are having uniform. Some public schools are having you know uh, uniforms, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But 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 this is it, you know, right? Uh, yeah, but you you mentioned one you know interesting thing for the leader, right? Because there are a lot of leaders who are managing very well, like up their bosses. You know, they can influence the boss, they can impress the boss, and they are not giving a shit to the direct reports or the level below. Yeah. Guys, this is the way to the hell. You know, right? Very soon, you will feel it. You if if you are going like up, 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 up. You know, right? It doesn't matter. But at some point, nothing grows to the, you know, sky, right? At some point, you will have some issues. And it's good to have a lot of supporters around you. And people will, I mean, you need to have a people from the organization. They they will really like, uh, they need to stay behind you, work with you, and so on. And I, I think this is, that's why it's important because unless you are like CEO, you will still have some people above you and you need to, you know, manage those relationships. Absolutely. But you will have a lot of people below you, you know, right? You will manage the organization. So you need to facilitate. That's another point. Communicate effectively from the list yeah. of <laughs> chat GDP. Communicate effectively. And if you are like middle in the organization, you really need to facilitate that, that you know, dialogue. You should, because if you are on the bottom, you can say, all people above me, they are stupid. They were just, promote, as you said, the whatever you call it, the effect the, of Peter. The Peter principle. Peter, yeah, yeah, Peter principle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were like, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they go till they're no longer competent, right? And, and you can, you know, for if you are on the top, you, you may say okay, but if if you are in the in the you know middle, that's a tough job, you know. That that's a tough job. You need to facilitate it, and uh, uh, that's why th those people in the middle organizations are really important, and it's important to add value. Okay, if you are in the middle of organization, unfortunately. What is happening in the large organizations, 
They are putting smart people from Harvard, Stanford, Imperial College in Europe, whatever, in South, in the middle, okay? And they are supposed to facilitate, but they are like sending emails up and down, up and down, okay? <laughs> and there is a, sometimes there's a very little additional value, you know, right? The good thing is once there is a crisis, then middle level is usually cut, you know, right? <laughs> well, this is why I was going to say. I mean, we you always, have to... Philippe Courtois, whenever he was like cutting, you know, some stuff, he was always saying the world is getting flat, you know, right? He was my boss for 15 years. He's a, he's a Microsoft president now. The world is getting flat, so we should also, you know, stay flat. But uh, this is it. So whatever you do, whatever you do, if you are working in some... A larger organization, you need to add value. This is it, you know. Yes. Right. This is why it's important to zoom out, know your purpose, know where are we headed, getting the troops aligned, helping people to move forward. By the way, one of your jobs as a leader is to remove roadblocks. In the meeting that you have, the weekly meeting, the bi weekly meeting, the first question you should be asking what's stopping you? What's getting in your way from moving forward? And how can I help? And it might be, how can I help you to facilitate a conversation? How can I get you the upskilling training you need? It doesn't mean you as a leader need to take it on to fix it. But it's let's find exactly. all the stuff slowing you down and let's zoom through it. Your job is to get shit out of the way so people can move forward. Exactly. I, I feel like I don't want to let our time end without saying something very important. As a leader, you are the person who sets the example, the role model of the culture that's acceptable. I don't care what you say. I don't care about the values you write down and put on the wall. I care what you're doing. What, so, what behavior is accepted and rewarded here in reality? And I've done, I don't know how many dozens of these purpose, vision, mission, values, workshops with leadership teams, right? And what I've figured out is there's one thing that if you have that, everything else falls into place and is not what you think it is. It's not what anyone thinks it is. It's kindness. Mm. And kindness, I don't mean nice. First of all, people think, oh, we should be nice to each other. We should be polite to each other. No, kindness just means the intention when you address anything, when you come with a problem, when you talk about how to you know, move forward, when you're um, having a difficult conversation, that it comes from a want to care and take care for the other person. Right. If the basis is kindness, you might call it respect, but respect is so vague if you always come to a conversation with kindness, if you come to every meeting with kindness, it doesn't mean niceness. It doesn't mean you can't have conflict. It doesn't mean you don't disagree, but it means you disagree from this place of wanting what's best for the mm -hmm. team, for the other, et cetera. Psychological safety comes into place. Good relationships comes into place. Team, right? Constructive conflict, creativity, belonging, engagement, every single one of those buzzwords that you read about in Harvard right. Business Review comes from the basis of kindness. And if you sit in the meeting as a leader and you say, I'm very nice in my personal life, but when I'm in business, I need you to do this and you did this wrong. And why aren't we having results here? You're not role modeling kindness. And then the whole organization will not show up that way either. So if there's one thing I can say that you as a leader need to cultivate, it's that kindness, that respect and everything else that will get people out of fear and into this trusting connection creative space i have two uh, two points to follow what lisa said uh, and one side is kindness on the other side you know fear is motivation fear is motivation but it's negative motivation and management by fear does not work even though a lot of people think now i'm manager so they need to be you know afraid of me you know i i can't fire you Guys, this doesn't work at all, you know, right? It's like, you know, mafia, killing one, you know, educates, uh, you know, 10,000, whatever, you know, right? Doesn't work like that. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the best leaders are able to admit their own mistakes. I would add the word publicly, okay, in yes. front of the whole group. Because once you will be able to do it, you will say, hey, 
This is it, what I did, because I'm not I'm the human being like you and making good things. I made some mistakes. Let's talk about that. You know, so once you will start to be open, your people will open to you. And they will start publicly speak about their own mistakes. And this is the way how you will build learning organization. That's what you need, yes. right? Because what stagnates at the same you know point doesn't work. Right. So this is it. So this is great. It, it takes, you know, a lot of courage. Uh, you know, it's kind of the killing fear of other people, fear of other people opinion. And if you do it and it, that's a very different level, if you can do it in front of the people like Bill Gates, then you will be promoted. You will be president for Europe, at least, you know, in your <laughs> like, because, I remember when, uh, you know, Jean Philippe was having with me one on one. He said, you know what? I talked to Bill Gates again, and he said, Vidyan, we have like 101 for one hour. He talks five minutes about success and 55 uh, minutes about what needs to be improved, his mistakes, whatever. <laughs> and that's that, that's what I did, because I was uh, kind of the expert on emerging markets, not only Central and Eastern Europe, which I was running at that time, but Brazil, Russia, India, China, what, what is similar, what is different, and so on. And, you know, uh, this is it, right? Because... Uh, this is this is how you can manage it. Wojtek Paleta put there something very interesting. I learn each day from my seven months old son Wojtek how to be a good leader for him, how should I support his potential, and how to help him to be a good, reliable person on his way. Okay, so guys, in general, okay, you can learn a lot from your kids. Because kids oh, yeah. are very natural, they are curious, they are creative. It's just like, you know, following them, watching them, what they do, how they ask questions later on. Seven months old is probably not asking uh, yet the questions. But this is it, because kids, when they are born, they have like 110 billion neurons. And those neurons are connected through, you know, synapses, how they, you know, learn in a very fast way. And they are not afraid to learn. You know, they they are like 60, 70 percent of the time up to the six years uh, old. They are in the flow. That's why they learn, you know, so fast. OK, so you can learn from the kids a lot. You can also how you can help them to be good leader and, you know, unlock their potential. This is what we do. I'm teaching on Friday, basically the student course, unlocking student potential. But we also teach the, the week after the unlocking children potential. We, we, we teach kids from like eight years old okay but if you are if your kids are that small you know you can watch them what they like to do because they have some, i can bet you they have some toys they play all the time because they can understand what is giving them energy what are their natural talents because talent is genes it's genetic information from their predecessors so you can figure out what are your talents you know based on what what what, what, what are his or her talents obviously they don't know what is talent but they know where is the energy okay and when the when the energy is coming from the dolls they play with the dolls when it's from you know a lego or whatever they they play with the lego so it's good to watch them what they do and what they build also from lego because if they build like you know houses or whatever and uh, later on maybe they will be like they will have a high imagination chances are that they would like to be architects in the future you know right that's what i do with the kids i coach it's amazing when they they do the test and i coach them and i ask them with what kind of the you know uh the toys did you play they remember some stuff some stuff it's edited by parents because they are together with the parents this is what you can do and you can help your you know child to be even more curious you know give them today I was uh, having the guy who is like, you know, Olympians and he got like two years old daughter. OK. And he asked me, how can I help? And I said, you need to push her like all, you know, expose all senses, you know, right. Different experiences, all senses, because that's the way how we learn, because your brain basically predicts based on what you learn and corrects you know so it's there's a co prediction correction that's the way you you know learn basically right so this is it that, that's how you can help uh, your son a lot you know to uh, you know encourage this curiosity a lot of you know different uh, experiences uh, you know 
and uh, yeah and then once he's like four years old i'm sure he can start to use you know artificial intelligence <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i'm just kidding but maybe you know why not why not yes right? absolutely will, because today it's more like text-based but it will be now we know how to recognize the pictures movement video and so on so it will be yeah. very very soon you know right Yes. If I can add, Wojciech, since we're over time, I'll add three things. One, give your children that basis of kindness. Help them to understand how to be kind to others, kind to themselves, kind to the family. Number two, right now your job as a parent is just to plant the right questions. By the way, same for leaders. I ask my daughters every night at bedtime, what are you grateful for? I ask them, what are you learning today? When they bring home their tests, I don't ask them their grades. I say, what did you find the most interesting? What did you find the most challenging? What are you curious to learn more about? What questions do you have, right? Plant the questions in their head, not telling them the always the answers. And the last thing I would say is the last generation, myself included, has been very protected by parents. Parents don't want to see kids suffer or hurt or be in pain or struggle. So we've protected them. Now as adults, they're struggling. They never learned how to deal with frustration and overcome difficulties on their own. They didn't have the practice in childhood. And it's actually giving everybody anxiety, depression, overwhelm. It's the, one of the worst things we can do, but we do it from a place of love. So my suggestion to you is watch them fail, let them struggle regularly, not alone where you're not there parenting, but when they're struggling, help them to work through the struggle. Don't avoid the struggle. Don't do the work for them, but help them to work through it. So they develop that skill set. By the way, same for leaders. Doesn't that parenting exactly. leader thing work out? We pay for athletes. <laughs> and as a matter of the fact, yesterday I was coaching Yiri Lehetska. He moved from in two years from 650. Now he's 36 in the world. So it's a pretty huge, you know, move, right? And we, we talk about exactly, he's 21 years old. I said, Yiri, this year is a learning year. There will be some matches. You will, he was yeah, like five, you know, top 10 players already beating. Some, you know, matches you will, you know, lose, but, you know, more you will have those tough, you know, matches, whether you turn it around or you may use it in three sets or five sets in terms of the grand slam. It's good for you, for your neuroplasticity, because your brain will remember that and will say, okay, I need to fight. It's like village kids are not afraid if they are learning to walk. This is exactly, you know, great experience, great example, because they are not afraid. If there would be FOPO, Nobody would walk because we would, after the first failure, the child would say, oh, oh I fucked up, you know. I would, you know, never do it yeah, again. Walking, yes. oh, no, no, no. That child has no fear of other people's opinion because that child's okay, I want to learn to walk and go again and again. And, and at, at some point, the child is, you know, walking. And it's the same like with your life, you know. you The, the, the problem is that we are losing that curiosity and as a, as a matter of the fact yesterday was a good discussion i provoked some you know uh, uh stuff uh, and i said the, the problem with the current system whether in school or in the companies we are teaching people how to answer stuff what we need now to be able to create great questions and basically sum up our issues. The same with the artificial intelligence. This is it. And the kids are great with the questions. They are really curious before they go to the school. School is giving them, hey, this is it. This is it. This is it. Okay. And then the leaders are really like on autopilot, on autopilot, which is at some point good. But you need to be aware of what's going on. To be really like, if you are mindful yourself, chances are, that you will be mindful of other people and you will be mindful of the whole organization that you will, you know, feel right and, and be empathic with the with the whole organization. Uh, but you will not create immediately. Hey, this is it. This is it. Right. Because we very often there's some situation and our brain, because the brain first priority is survival. We are putting the sticker immediately. This is good. This is bad. And you don't know sometimes how about if this is really bad for you today okay how about if you will not ask the question oh shit, i fell if you would ask 
what can I learn? How can I use this experience from today, uh, you know, for tomorrow? What should I do differently? That's a very different discussion, very different, you know, sticker. And that's how we, you know, can develop. And that's the same for the for the for the leaders. Because if for for me, the major breakthrough was when I said, okay, I will be successful or I will learn. There is nothing else. There's like failure, you know, but I will, you know, learn. I will take it as a learning experience because, you know, it's gone, you know, because once the causality is here, which means like, hey, you know, the the before the outcome, there is some driver of that, you know, outcome. That's the causality, you know, right? And if that's true, you cannot change the things which happened in the past. You know, why we take care of that at all? We should learn, move on, learn, move on. That's what the kids are doing, by the way. That's boy, that's exactly what the kids are doing. Maybe they cry for like three minutes. They learn, they move. They learn, they move. You know, this is yeah, it. That's exactly it. So as we unfortunately have to wrap up for today, the main point here, at least from my side, to go from a doer to a learner is to actually stop and realize I have to change my skill set. I have a completely different job here. And don't get hung up in here's what I was good at. Let me just continue to do that more. Step out of the comfort zone, use this learning growth mindset and know I can learn how to do these leadership skills. And we talked about many that are going to make you this great leader. If you don't know how to do them yet, no problem. Do not revert back to your comfort zone. Do not revert back to what's urgent for the day that needs to get done. Stop, zoom out, learn and grow and role model that for a team. You will be happier, healthier and more successful. Absolutely. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Uh, it was uh, very interesting. Looking forward for the next session. Uh, you know, we will save it on in all channels. It will be on YouTube. On YouTube, by the way, there's like mix of the past videos from uh, with English and the uh, my you know uh, videos with the in in Czech. Uh, there's a Facebook also, and and obviously it will be also saved on. Uh, LinkedIn. So thanks very much. Uh, good night and good luck uh, for this week. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye.